The gospel that you just heard Deacon John read is, of course, the Last Supper. And here the Lord, as he's done throughout his ministry, recognizes the hungers of people. Even before they are able to identify correctly their hunger, the Lord is answering their need. For here at the Last Supper, the disciples are unaware it is the Last Supper. They do not know that soon they're going to be hungering for the presence of the Lord. He will be gone from their midst, tried and now condemned, and then executed and buried. They will wonder, they will yearn for this night when he was there. And he took the bread, broke it, and said, This, my body. And then pouring the wine and blessing it, saying, This, my blood. They will hunger for that presence, even as they do not yet understand it. And that's important, for God is always answering our hungers, even when we have not fully understood nor acknowledged what that hunger truly was. You know, nutritionists today tell us, modern people, that when you're getting hungry or you feel hunger, they say, before you open the cupboard, before you look in the refrigerator, make sure you know what you're really hungering for. That's good advice. Every one of us, I think, would raise our hands and say, have you ever been hungry for something and grabbed the wrong thing instead? Oh yeah, we have. And sometimes, some of our eating disorders are because our hunger is not so much for the physical food as it is for some spiritual or emotional hunger. So the Lord is telling us with the disciples, I am what you need, even before you recognize it. I will satisfy your hunger. And today we celebrate then this feast, the body and blood of Christ, and we recognize Eucharist is not a thing, not a noun. It's an experience. It's a verb. It's not that we receive or take communion, it's that we become Eucharist. It changes us. It transforms us. Now, on the level of the purely human, we know food changes and determines who we become. Eat bad food or junk, we will not have the health we need. Eat more healthy food, we become a more healthy person. Now, in a spiritual way, the Lord is telling us what you take in, this presence of the Lord changes you. It makes you something more than you were without it. So just as we'll welcome these young children and invite all to receive at this table of the Lord, this table of plenty, it should change us. We are more having received this Eucharist, for the presence of God himself is with us. We are something more. So we cannot just leave here today and pat ourselves on the stomach and say, I am satisfied, I am filled, I am enriched by the Lord who gave me the body, who poured out his blood. That is not enough. To be nourished is helpful, for it will indeed tell us, you and I, for as he told the disciples, I am healing for what is broken within you. I am comfort for the loss you experience. I am hope for the fear and the discouragement that may daunt and plague you. That is all true. But to say that I have been taken care of and that I am fed is to miss what the Lord did. Before he feeds them, remember that last supper, he washed their feet. He said, as I do, you must also do, as I have poured out my love and my life and shared in giving you my presence, you must take and be Eucharist one for another. How do you do that? How can you be Eucharist to another? And you look at the pages of Scripture, and it is there very clearly. Look at the one most familiar to us the hillside, covered with people who are hungry. They're simply physically famished. They've listened to the Lord, and they are hungry. But the Lord is the one who recognizes their hunger. And then a little boy comes forward. But 
even the disciples almost want to dismiss him. Want him to say, Lord, don't even look at this one. There is not enough in his little basket to feed all of these. And yet the boy is encouraged to bring the gift. And the gift is enough. What he brings is sufficient. For the Lord multiplies the gift and allows all those to be fed. That little boy becomes the source of Eucharist for all those on the hillside. So you and I, we have many friends who are hungering in different ways for the presence of God, for peace that they seek, for whatever it is. And you and I feel inadequate. I don't know what to say. I don't know how to talk to them. I don't know what I can bring to them. I don't know how to help them. And in this case, you do simply what that little boy does. You pray to be the instrument, and you simply are who you are. What you are, what you have is enough, even if you don't think so. The Lord will make of it what the Lord needs of it. That's all the little boy tells us. That's how you Eucharist. I allow myself to be the instrument, and I allow the Lord to take what I bring, as little as it is, and it'll be enough. So if I feel I don't have the words for my friend, I don't think I can bring enough to tell them what they need to hear, just do it. Be the instrument, and you'll be the Eucharist. Or think of another time in the scriptures. Think for a time when there were just a few. There was just those few men who carried their friend on a stretcher to the Lord. He is crippled, paralyzed. He cannot make the journey without them. And they bring him to the feet of Jesus. They are Eucharist for that man, for they bring him into the presence of the God who will heal them. Now many of us have friends who are paralyzed in so many different ways. Some of them are paralyzed by their own brokenness, their own illness. Some of them are crippled by their lack of an ability to forgive and by their continued anger with someone. And there are some <clears throat> who cannot move beyond their loss or their grief. You and I need to be Eucharist for them. And we're that by walking with them. We stay with them. We hear their stories. We comfort them. We are the words of compassion for them. We walk that journey. We don't abandon them. We don't say, I'll pray for you and walk away. I walk the journey to the Lord with them in whatever is crippling them, paralyzing them, or holding them bound. I am Eucharist to those of my friends. Or maybe it is in another way. It's like Andrew, Peter's brother. He brings Peter to the Lord. How does he do it? Well, simply by being the brother, by saying and speaking of what he heard from this rabbi, Jesus, and so on fire, so convinced, such an example that Peter is convinced, I need to meet this man. Andrew is so convincing that Peter, too, wants to know. We have forged friendships out of ties of family and love with one another. We need to be the example, and that's how we're Eucharist. Be that example. Speak to the other one of what you know of God's goodness, or let them see it in your example of how you live your life with joy or hope, even with your burdens. If we could see that in another, we could be like Peter, attracted to it so much that I want to be there. I am Eucharist for those people. Or finally, it's Mary. You've seen her many times in the scripture, but remember the first miracle. It's Mary who causes it, who calls it into being. There at Cana, before the bride and groom notice their hunger, their need, Mary does, and she asks the Lord, take care of them. They'll be embarrassed. Help them out. They're in need tonight. You and I are Eucharist when we bring to others our prayer for them. We have those cards that, as Deacon John said, we'll invite you to take with you. Pray for others. As Mary said to the Lord, 
take care of them. We're saying, Lord, take care of these who need so much. Ease their sorrow, lift their burden, guide them on their way, help them in their discernment, call them back to your heart. I am Eucharist for those, as Mary was for that couple. That's what I am. I am Eucharist. It's not just something I take, a noun I celebrate. It's a verb, an experience I am. Christ would tell the disciples, as I have done, you also must do. I was Eucharist for you, as he will be for us. His living presence still within us. We bear that living presence in those actions. And in that way, we too are Eucharist one for the other.